Hello everyone, and welcome back to coverage of Grand Prix Sao Paulo for the MSCM format. I'm Caillou, and today we're going to be watching the top 8 match between Time Spiraled on Black Red Burn and Ash on Grixis Casino Scan. So this is our first top 8 match we're going to be covering, super excited for it. Both these players are playing uh, really intense, uh, fast-paced decks. Time Spiraled is on the old, uh, like a, you know, old reliable uh, black red burn try and starting off keeping a one lander but they have four spikes plus a suitor of the sea that's a crazy good hand meanwhile ash also has a similarly powerful hand um they only have two lands but they have both of their combo pieces so uh casino scam is a combo deck which works a lot like ad nauseum you play by time so you can't lose the game you use all or nothing uh, drawing your entire deck, and then we have uh, a lab mana like that you win the game with. Um, so it has both of the combo pieces in hand. Uh, also has consult the dewdrops. Unfortunate thing, uh, or like, sorry, uh, it. The fortunate thing about this is that it can definitely make up for those uh, land issues uh, by uh, quote unquote drawing them. Um, especially since Ash probably wants to be able to cast a fair trial to exile the suitor of the sea as soon as possible. And right as I was, as I was mentioning the lab mana like, here it is, it's Last Passage, which essentially is lab mana until end of turn on a spell. And uh, Time Spiral's decision to keep a one lander, paying emphatically off, um, has drawn two consecutive lands, swings in with the suitor of the sea, and then gets to go Storm Surge into Unjust Sentence, presumably. Uh, the the sequencing really doesn't matter here because Ash doesn't have relevant creatures. But in most matchups, you you play out the unjust sentence first so that you can actually keep uh, Scorch up as removal if you need it. But yeah, puts uh, Ash down to eleven. Next turn is going to be uh, oh, and they have to and they're and they're losing life from this Crystal Cavern, which uh, is a pain land. So Ash can consult the Dewdrops and they need to find a basic here. But is that even enough? Unless they find like they need to find like a basic swamp, there. Well, there it is, basic swamp. Um, kill suitor of the sea with fair trial, and then hope to draw a land, because otherwise, um, uh, time spiral untaps, uh, deals six damage with the scorches, two with suitor of the sea, and Ash is down to two health. Uh, takes one more on the upkeep because of suitor, and is down to one health. So, and it's basically death if uh, time spiral draws a third spike. So. And there's the fourth land. This is actually really, really important because it means that uh, as long as uh, if okay, so this is this is this comes down to uh, a spike check. If Matt draws the third spike, game over. Otherwise, Ash can buy time and then win the game instantly. Oh, and it's another land. So, Time Spiral can uh, double scorch uh, Ash's face, putting them to three. But then at that point, Ash just untaps. Plays Flooded Morass, which enters untapped because uh, they have a swamp. And then at any time, you 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 generally prefer to play by time on your opponent's end step because you want two turns, but uh, can also play it in response to a burn spell. So just plays by time sometime on Matt's turn, untaps, plays all or nothing, drawing their deck, takes their second turn, and then last passage is to win the game. So, whew. Yeah, like, unless there's something I'm missing, Ash just wins the game now. With kind of the god hand... Both of these players had insane openers, to be fair. Yeah, so Ash just plays the land and passes. Um, can now, at any point during uh, Time Spiral's turn, just play out the buy time. Okay, and the thing is, Matt, w if uh, Ash didn't have the buy time here, uh, Matt would be definitely, or like mostly definitely, able to kill Ash because they'd play Reckless Festivities, then fetch up a land with Shardstone Rift, and like. Basically, Reckless Festivities guarantees that Matt will draw a spike, unless they really, really hard whiff. So, in, there's no reason not to do this in response. In response is going to buy time. Matt's still going to run it out. It's just going to keep drawing cards. I guess, I mean, I guess trying to guarantee lethal, but you already guarantee lethal with Brazen Sacrifice, Basat Charm. And also, importantly, Ash has no life. And they have no ways of gaining life because buy time stops that. So, there's really no reason to go super deep on this one, you just kind of have to hope Ash doesn't have it and is just going to dig for it and lose, essentially. Because once they've cast the buy time, it's uh, essentially like, uh, it's just a critical moment in the game where you're basically just at Ash's mercy past that point. Okay, so Matt 
uh, draws four off of the Reckless Festivities, puts themselves to six life because they unfortunately hit a second Reckless Festivities and a Storm Surge, so took six from that. Um, but yeah, here we go. And Time Spiraled va valiantly tried to stop it, but yeah, it's all gas from Ash at this point. Plays the all or nothing, draws their deck, and plays the last passage. Bada bing, bada boom, that's game one. And that, ca that, that came right down to the wire. If... Again, if Time Spiral had drawn a, a, a third spike, uh, then the game would have, they would have just won. But uh, Ash had that one fair trial to buy themselves just enough time in order to uh, uh, get to four lands and then combo off. So let's quickly look at sideboards before we get into game two. So let's look at uh, Time Spiral's sideboard. Uh, Curse of Blading and Rage of the Ravage are both like you. You play this versus life gain decks. You play this versus uh, more storm combo -y decks. Long Forgotten, I don't think is... Like, Long Forgotten and Moon Rises, you can kind of use them if your opponent... Uh, the, only, the only time it's relevant is if your opponent plays both of their last passages, and then you can exile them so that they can't get it back with Dead Man's Party. Uh, but I don't know... Yeah, I just... I, like, most of the sideboard just doesn't seem very relevant on Time Spiral's side. You, like, you probably just try to outrace them instead of uh, interacting. On Ash's end, uh, let's see, Death oh yeah, Deathless Siege is a Windmill Slam versus Burn. It's a, uh, if you ever resolve it versus Burn, you auto-win auto auto the game. So, it's, uh, though that's free to bring in. You probably bring in, you can bring in uh, Thought Blossoms and Memento Moris. But you don't really need to, because Thought Blossom countering a spike, you're going down on tempo. Memento Mori is good for killing their creatures, but you're like not super crazy about it. Ignition Ritual, I don't think that Matt's deck has enough creatures, and also put like having to pay life is really painful. So I think the only Windmill Slam card here is the Deathless Siege. The rest come down to Ash's discretion. Okay, and uh, we're looking at openers here. Wow, the coveted Triple Wayfarer Shrine from Ash. Uh, it looks like they did bring in the Thought Blossom. Have a neat little curve of uh, Seek Prophecy into either thought, Hold Up Thought Blossom and Consult the Dewdrops and then uh, Crystal Wave to play more of an interactive control game. And that's why, and that's what is pretty powerful about uh, Casino Scam. Sometimes you just get those nut draws like we saw earlier um, and play as a combo deck. Other times you slow roll it and just uh, grind them out of resources before you combo off, which is also really good versus other opposing control decks or decks with like Hand Attack because you can effectively play the long game. Uh, on the other side of the table, Matt keeping a five uh, has, and this is kind of an awkward five. You have Suitor of the Sea and then Scorch, uh, but you're you're missing out on a mana turn two. You do have Reckless Facilities to gas back up, and that is pretty important, but it does mean that you don't have a chance for a turn three kill, and you have to wait until turn four. Um, and also, being down on resources really hurts. Uh and I think the problem is that uh, Ash has the interaction re for Reckless Festivities. Can, can like, yeah, like if you're, if you're Ash, you actually, you just play Wayfarer Shrine, grab eggs, uh, grab, a, uh, grab a Swamp, Exit, Kill Suitor of the Sea uh, when it come, goes to attack. And then uh, you can hold up a Thought Blossom turn two or uh, on your turn two for Reckless Festivities on uh, Time Spiral's turn three. And they did draw the land for it, so they would be able to Reckless Festivities. So yeah, it goes to swing with the Suitor of the Sea, but Exit coming down. I'm gonna stymie uh, Time Spiral's only real recurring source of uh, damage here. Main two, uh, while uh, Ash is tapped out, just gonna Scorch face. But yeah, now Time Spiral is entirely relying on this Reckless Festivities to gas back up. And Ash is just gonna, ooh, Ash is gonna immediately crack the Wayfarer Shrine for a blue presumably, and then just hold up Consult plus Thought Blossom. Yeah. And once this Reckless Festivities gets countered, um, Time Spiral's life is far harder, especially when they're flooding out like this. So yeah, Reckless Festivities coming down. And then the Thought Blossom doesn't even, you do, like, doesn't even need to steal. You probably don't even want to have this uh, Spell Steal effect here. Um, usually the Spell Steal is much better against, like, a Flexible Burn like a Scorch, because so then you can steal it and then kill their... Um, uh, one of their creatures with it, but here it's just like, eh, 
Like, you, you never want to play the Reckless Pursuit because you lose so much life. And it doesn't actually function as another copy of All or Nothing since you actually need to pay the life and you don't just lose it. And since, because buy time sets your luck to zero, you don't have any life to pay. So Ash is just going to play the Wayfarer Shrine and pass. Has the Crystal Wave up if they need it. Otherwise, uh, they've got the uh, Consult the Dewdrops. And since this is uh, a Time Spiral's last card in hand, they're going to counter this top deck or carry dis Dissident for sure. Because if you let it resolve, you take one more damage. So, say up, gets countered. And now, Time Spiral's entirely out of resources, and Ash has three powerful cantrips to be able to dig for their combo to capitalize off of uh, the time they're going to get from uh, Time Spiral's digging. So, yeah, it's going to Seek Prophecy first. Fair Trial, Crumbling Precipice, Seek Prophecy. You probably take the Fair Trial here just to be safe, um, just as extra interaction. Oh no, did they take? Oh no, okay, they're gonna they're gonna prophecy the seek prophecy. Yeah, so then you Oh, and they take the crum crumbling precipice and not the fair trial. Interesting. Uh, my thought was that you already have two land two fetch lines in hand, so you you'd want to take the uh you'd want to take the fair trial to actually have interaction for a potential top deck creature. Instead it looks like Ash is just gonna hold up double consult, or I guess sing single consult, um, and then pass. And the next turn can go Consult plus Seek Prophecy to dig even deeper. Okay, Basat Charm from Time Spiral. That is going to be... So that is T minus 3 spikes uh, to victory. On end, Ash going to run out the Consult the Dewdrops. And is going to grab a by time, bottoming a Last Passage, Exit, and a Land. So that's one half of the combo. Uh, Duress kind of useless here while uh, uh, Time Spiral is empty-handed. But again... They can just uh, cast Seek Prophecy at sorcery speed and then hold up Consult and make uh, Time Spiral scared of a Thought Blossom. Um, they did tap uh, wrong, wrong quote-unquote, here. You'd want to tap the Mountain if you wanted to threaten Thought Blossom, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, especially when they reveal double all or nothing off of the Seek Prophecy. That's both combo halves in hand. This means unless uh, Matt can kill Ash next turn, which, I mean, I don't think there's any way for... Uh, Matt to deal uh, 8 damage. Like, your best draw is Reckless Festivities, because then you can Reckless Festivities, hit a hit another land drop and 2 spikes, and then hit Ash for 6. But like, well, we'll get to Forbidden Brew Ash. Puts them down to 5. But, yeah. Now Ash just untaps and wins the game. Oh, and, and the third all or nothing to boot after they just bottomed uh, the second. And yeah, since they now have six mana, they're just de they're just de demonstrating. Time Spiral is empty-handed, so this is game. Because you play by time, untap, you have six mana, so you can play all or nothing, and then immediately play Last Passage on your extra turn. You don't even need to wait for your opponent's end step to do this. So, Ash is just trying to be like, hey, uh, I got you. And with that, um, Ash uh, wins our first top eight match, uh, and... I think that's crazy impressive uh, run so far, going into semifinals at their first GP. Like, like hard to understate how impressive that is. So really good uh, showing here from Ash. Uh, and good luck to them uh, uh, going forward. Again, they're two matches away from winning this entire GP. Of course, there are uh, now six other people who are vying for those same matches. So... Uh, when we next come back with our other quarterfinals matches, we'll get to meet those uh, contenders. But for now, congratulations uh, to Ash. Good games to both players. And until next time, this is Caillou signing off.